Good evening. Adelaide Football Club captain Taylor Walker has spoken of his love for slain coach Phil Walsh. The man, chosen by Walsh as captain only months ago, describing how his teammates are trying to come to terms with the devastating loss. Still struggling with the loss of their leader and the way he died, Crows players and their families gathered this morning. The man Walsh had anointed as captain, expressing what they were all feeling. He was just a great man and, and one that I... I um, started to fall in love with. Taylor Walker giving an insight into how the death of a man they'd become so close with <laughs> was so very difficult to bear. When you lose your, your head honcho, you, yeah, you hit you pretty hard. And obviously when we heard the news, everyone took it their own way, but it's a pretty numb feeling at the moment. Like um, every individual is probably taking it a little bit harder or taking it a bit different than each other. Phil Walsh's wife, Meredith, was released from hospital today, having been wounded in the stabbing attack that killed her husband in their Somerton Park home early yesterday morning. As you can expect, it's, a, it's a, been a very tough time for the Walsh family. Um, I spoke to Meredith yesterday. Uh, you know, that was a difficult conversation. Just, I can't even comprehend the grief that she, you know, must have. She and her daughter left to grapple with the fact their son and brother, Sire, had been charged with killing his father. Phil Walsh's family home no longer a crime scene today, but watched by a security guard as the stark reality set in for neighbours. It was just a very sombre mood. I mean, the neighbours, I think, are all in shock. We're in shock, you know, like it's, it's really tra tragic what's happened. Um, yeah, we, we just can't believe it. They left tributes to the man they hardly knew but felt compelled to acknowledge. It's just a sad day for football and a sad day for, I guess, anyone. And in that situation, any family man or any family has to go through that. It was very nice. One young neighbour getting back to the game that Phil Walsh had loved. And police reporter Ben Avery has been following the investigation into Phil Walsh's murder. Ben, there's been a breakthrough for detectives. Uh, there has, Will. We understand that the taxi, taxi driver who police believe spotted Cy Walsh at the intersection of Brighton and Jetty Roads in the early hours of yesterday morning has now come forward. So police will be hoping to work with him to try and get to the very bottom of what is a very sad murder case. Now, police have also spent a lot of time gathering security footage in this area. We understand they've taken some, some uh, security footage from a service station on Brighton Road and they're now looking at that security footage as also part of this investigation. Now, in terms of any potential link between the drug ice and this case, well, police wanted to make it very clear today that while they can't rule anything in or out, at this stage they have absolutely no evidence that Cy Walsh was under the influence of the drug ice in the early hours of yesterday morning. Will? Yeah, thanks very much, Ben Avery. And Phil Walsh's son has been transferred from the Flinders Medical Centre to the state's most secure mental health facility. Reporter Jared Brevy is live at Oakden. And Jared, when did the transfer happen? Will Cy Walsh was transferred here to the James Nash Mental Health Facility in an ambulance yesterday evening. He was heavily sedated throughout the day. He was underwent a psychological assessment at the Flinders Medical Centre. He was then transferred to a psych ward and subsequently brought here to this facility at Oakton. It's a place where no one wants to see any family member end up, particularly in these horrific circumstances. Now let's take a look at Cy Walsh's life over the past few years. It was a seemingly normal family which Phil Walsh had taken along as he pursued his football dreams and encouraged his children to do the same. I tell my kids to chase their dreams, so I probably, probably don't want to look back 70 years old and think what might have been. But online posts suggest the path Cy Walsh had chosen, at least at one time, was a dangerous one. Cy's online posts revealing his experimentation with illegal drugs. On one site he posted about his use of both LSD and magic mushrooms, saying LSD was in his experience great for visuals and that change in perception. But he then shares his greater enthusiasm for magic mushrooms. Mushrooms have changed my life forever. Since my first mushroom experience opened me up spiritually. Psychedelics have helped my game and life immensely. Experts say using one illicit drug often leads to another. Most people start with smoking cigarettes, marijuana next, amphetamines next. 
And while police have said there's no evidence to suggest Sai had turned to ice in the lead-up to his father's death, their investigation continues as detectives try to discover what went so tragically wrong for a seemingly vibrant young man who'd also used social media to share his great adventures. And Cy Walsh will remain here at the James Nash Mental Health Facility until at least his next court appearance on September the 15th. Here he will receive any treatment necessary. He'll be under tight security and closely monitored. Will? Yeah, thanks very much, Jared. The outpouring of emotion has continued at the Adelaide Football Club with hundreds today heading to West Lakes to remember Phil Walsh. Reporter Eddie Godfrey is there and Eddie, remarkable scenes. Yeah, that's right, Will. There's been a steady flow of people here all day today and lots of people continue to arrive here to pay their respects here tonight. This memorial is at least three or four times bigger than it was when we arrived first thing this morning and now that they've lit some candles in amongst the flowers here, it's making for quite a sombre atmosphere. An overwhelming outpouring of grief for a man who was admired by so many. Just such a tragedy and for the club and everybody concerned. Heartbroken fans began arriving at Crow's headquarters from first light. By mid-morning, a sea of flowers, scarves and guernseys flooded the club's main entrance. I feel sorry for them that they, um, have, to con but they have to continue on without Phil Walsh. He's been with the club for only a short time, but he's made such a big difference to, it, to the club uh, and we can feel it as supporters. Among the mourners, 76-year-old Beatrice Short, who caught a taxi to Westlakes to pay her respects. It's very uns upsetting. Deep down you feel as though that you're, you're a part of that team. This tragedy bringing teams and even fierce rivals together. Just thought I'd come down and pay my respects to you know, our arch rival but got ultimate respect for them as well. This is the weekend that Michelle and I become rivals but we've banded together because of uh, what, you know, what's happened. It's just a tragedy. The sorrow not lost on even the club's youngest supporters. I put a few things down and one of them was a football, a hat and a poster. And why, why did you want to do that? To remember the coach. You don't know what to do, like the Crows don't have a coach and all the players wouldn't know what to do. Phil's united all of Adelaide, he's great part of both clubs and a lot of other clubs. While some lifted their spirits with a kick on the reserve, a few players quietly stopped by but opted to keep their distance. Crows great and board member Mark Rusciuto also grieving a mate and a colleague. We're all just so shocked here um, about what has happened. We can't believe it's happened and we just feel for his wife and his daughter, his other family members and, and mates uh, all over the country. When the time is right, he'll lead the club's unenviable task of finding someone to fill the giant boots left by Phil Walsh. He had all the attributes of uh, what it uh, took to be a great coach, so uh, it's going to be unfortunate that we don't get to find out how good he could have been. Now, while this memorial continues to grow by the hour and it's already well and truly taken over the entrance to the club's headquarters here, the club wants it to remain. It has no plans to move it and anyone who wishes to contribute is encouraged to do so, Will. Yeah, quite amazing. Thanks, Eddie. The South Australian community will get its first chance to publicly remember Phil Walsh at the Adelaide Oval tomorrow. Harvey Biggs joins me in the studio and, Harvey, the public will be allowed inside the stadium. Yeah, that's right, Will. As we know, tomorrow's clash between Adelaide and Geelong has been cancelled, but the stadium's management has today announced it will throw open the doors and let the public in for free. At 2.30, the gates will open and the siren will sound at 2.50 when the game was scheduled to start. The public will be allowed on the ground to have a kick and walk on the surface until 4pm. A decision Adelaide Oval CEO Andrew Daniels says is an important chance for the community to come together. An opportunity to remember a great of the game on football's grand stage. It is such a tragic and un, uh, unprecedented set of circumstances. Uh, we believe that we do need to provide the opportunity to people, if they wish, to come down here to the Oval, uh, where they would have come tomorrow. And it won't be the only tribute at the Oval tomorrow. 
fans have driven a non-official memorial online, inviting the public to link arms together at 1pm. As people come in, we're just going to get the circle bigger and bigger and bigger and, and hopefully we get enough people to wrap around the whole Oval. Eh? From the Oval to the suburbs, the outpouring of grief for Phil Walsh continues. I think it's affected or impacted um, a lot of people in a lot of different ways. Um, yeah, so it's got us all thinking, I think. People taking to social media to share their tributes. Crows, Port Adelaide and other scarves outside homes, draped on fences, doors and balconies. Well, yesterday morning when I heard the news, um, that was the first thing we thought of. Even those who don't follow the game, hand-making their own symbol. And it's not just South Australians showing their true colours. Supporters across the country, from Tasmania to Melbourne to New South Wales, even overseas, have been moved to show their respect. And it's cross codes as well. Rugby fans, soccer supporters and more joining the cause. As one put it, this tragedy breaches the divide. A young supporter taking to the internet to express his feelings. And I'm just devastated, like, I'm a close supporter myself and it just sucks. At Morfittville, the Jockey Club 2 paid tribute. AFL House tied the scars of all 18 clubs out the front of their headquarters, but for many, allegiances and colours no longer matter for the time being, dropping their own team to join the 19th Man Army for now. Harvey Biggs, Nine News. The sporting world has stood silent, remembering a football great who devoted his life to the game. From country ovals to the MCG, the 55-year-old was honoured. Phil Walsh's legacy stretching far beyond the AFL world. When the final siren sounded, there were no celebrations, no team song, just a touching tribute from the Hawthorne and Collingwood football clubs. This is something we've Not never, seen. never seen uh, in our game. And just the, the, the players and the coaches showing their support, showing their unity, uh, it, is, uh, it is a very emotional scene. That's amazing. Last night's show of solidarity set the tone for the weekend. In country Victoria, Walsh's former clubs played in his honour. His hometown team, Hamilton Magpies, took on Portland. While at Port Arlington, Walsh's nephew, Josh Finch, captained his uncle's former side, Motawari. Here in South Australia, amateur football has paused to reflect on the tragic loss. Community football, you know, we, we're all a big family and um, it's just important to pay respects because, you yeah, know, Adelaide's hurting at the moment. The Crows and Magpies' SANFL games were postponed, but three more matches went ahead. One of Walsh's former teammates summed it up best. It's just a, a really sad day for football and for, uh, and for everyone uh, associated with the game. From local leagues to the big league, players big and small paid tribute to the football stalwart. The emotion too much for some. Despite never playing for Richmond, Walsh's legacy at the Tigers was strong. He coached alongside Mark Williams and mentored current coach Damian Hardwick. The AFL world still coming to grips with the loss. We spoke to them yesterday about what sort of man he was and how he was ahead of his time and what a wonderful you know, person he was. So look, it's a tragic set of circumstances. Our thoughts go out to the family and you know, words can't describe how we felt yesterday. At the end of a physical battle, they too put differences aside to stand side by side. It's amazing, you know, footy's such a small game when something significant happens and you know, we, we give our thanks to a great man that's been a part of, you know, my life and a lot of other people's lives along the way. And... But the death of Phil Walsh didn't just affect the AFL world. His passing transcended football codes. Rugby league players paused to remember the football stalwart. While half a world away, our Aussie cricketers wore black armbands in their Ashes warm-up match against Essex. Oh, and the tributes will continue tomorrow when thousands of junior footballers take to the field. From young children to grown adults, everyone is finding a way to pay their respect to Phil Walsh. Jack Paquetta, Nine News. And join us tomorrow at 5.30 when Warren Treadray and Tom Wren present a Nine News special on the legacy of Phil Walsh and how the Crows will get through this unthinkable tragedy.